every single one of you listening like has the power to create that life. I so much used the weekends to escape the life that I had instead of using the weekends to create the life that I wanted. Realizing that the things that we're looking for on the weekends, these feelings of joy and contentment and like relaxation and just happiness, truly, we are looking for them in the wrong places. We're looking for them in, you know, eating out Mexican every single Friday night and three baskets of chips and queso and margaritas. And while that may make you feel happy in the moment, it's not really aligning with like where you want to go in life and what your goals are because so often and this is just the culture we live in the society we live in it's that instant gratification that we want so much true discipline is foregoing the instant gratification for the long-term vision that you really have for your life and realize that the true joy you're looking for comes from making promises to yourself and following through with them Welcome back, you guys, to another episode of the Beyond the Scale podcast. Today, I have a special guest for you. So today, I have Emily, Emily Judice, who is a certified nutrition coach through Faster Way to Fat Loss, who specializes in mindset and helping women get the body they have always dreamed of. Emily has been a top coach for the last four years, impacting thousands of women and inspiring them to get physically healthy. Emily believes that physical health is the catalyst to see your life more clearly and step into your next level of identity as a woman with goals to accomplish. Creating the life that you want to live is within you right now. So Emily is going to offer up some tips and tricks that have not only worked for her, but for thousands of other women that she has coached over the years. So welcome Emily to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be on here and, and really have this uh, this conversation. Yeah, me too, me too. So for our listeners, just a little background. So I actually came across Emily's Instagram page several months ago. And first thing I noticed is have to be not be honest is your bright red lipstick, which I absolutely love. And just how you just like were beaming, like all of your posts, all of your videos, you're so positive, you're so happy, you like, are the ideal model of what we all want to be when it comes to healthy and fit and happy. And so I was instantly drawn to that. And so I started, you know, looking through her page, I reached out and I was like, Hey, you would be a great guest for the podcast because our listeners would connect to your story so much. So she's a mom of four and we're going to kind of start there um, and how she got into her health journey as she was, you know, having babies and going through four different pregnancies and four postpartum journeys. So let's first kind of start there and what like that aha moment was for you that led you into coaching. Yeah, gosh. So, um, let me just tell you, I have not always been this way, like all those wonderful ways that you just described me. That has not always been me. Um, we were actually talking before we started recording this about my kids and I have an age gap in between my first two and my second two um, kids. Um, We have a four year age gap and there was a lot of transformation that happened during that time for sure. Um, I was not always someone who identified as a healthy person. I actually would say I identified quite the opposite of that. Um, I actually posted a reel this morning on my Instagram describing the person that I used to be. And that person was someone who, you know, if it was lunchtime and I was in my car, I could not drive past a fast food restaurant without pulling in to get something to eat. I joined every bar studio, every Pilates studio, every gym, spent hundreds of dollars and literally could only make myself go for like a week. I was that person. Like I could not nail down a workout routine. I could not stay consistent for any amount of time. Um, I was, you know, a mom of two at the time. I had my first two children and 
I just looking back at like really my whole twenties, like the whole twenties decade of my life, I'm 30, I'll be 35 in May. Um, I was just unhealthy. And I thought that that was all that life had to offer. I thought that that mediocre life I was living, that was not full of energy, that was tired all the time, that had no plan, um, that tried all these fad diets off and on trying to lose a little weight here, lose a little weight there. Um, I thought that that was it. Like this was what my life was going to be until Mm -hmm. we actually moved. Um, We live in Houston, Texas, but we're from Louisiana. And right after my third baby was born, she was a few months old. We, we, my husband got a job offer in Houston. We moved. And that is really where my health journey begins. And so that was about four and a half years ago. And it started with me doing this program that one of my friends was a coach for, um, one of my college friends, and it was faster way to fat loss. And I became a client because I was ready to lose the baby weight, you know, again, for the third time. And this program was just different. It taught me how my body worked. It taught me that I didn't have to, you know, eliminate carbs or do anything drastic in order to lose the weight. It taught me that I didn't have to be starving on a diet every single day in order to lose weight. And I was able to lose the baby weight on that program. And I actually was a client of the program for over a year before I um, kind of, I had a little bit of a social media presence when I say little, very little, like very, very little, but I would talk about stuff on my stories that I was doing. So I was naturally talking about the program and my journey and my results and people would ask me about it. And there was this aha moment where I was like, I never in my, I was 30 years old at this point. I was like, I would, I never in my 30 years of life realized that I could eat this much food and actually lose weight and actually reach my goals. And I didn't know that I could do 30 to 40 minute workouts and actually see results. And the fact that I know this now, it was like this responsibility that I felt in within myself that like I had to tell everybody, (laughs) you know, like everybody needed to know about this way of like losing weight of this way of getting healthy. And oh my gosh, it's like, if I think about what I knew then versus what I know now, I mean, I have just become so passionate about the health and wellness space. Um, I am a hundred percent a gym girly. I lift weights. Like that's my favorite thing to do. Um, I literally, that is a huge part of my identity. Like if you ask my friends now that I've met in Texas, they would be like, oh, Emily, like she loves to work out. She loves to eat healthy. She loves to go to bed at nine o'clock because it's good for her body. Like that is how I identify. And it is just crazy to think that I was used to be this girl who bought clothes to like cover up my muffin top and couldn't like, could not be out of a drive-through. Like, I mean, I probably ate fast food like five times a week, more than that probably. And, you know, I drank alcohol every day. Like I always had to have a wine to take the edge off. And I just, I never in a million years thought that I would get to a point where I enjoyed working out, um, like I do now. And, you know, if I can change that, if I can make that identity shift, other moms out there listening right now that are like, I want to identify as a healthy person. Like you absolutely can. You absolutely have the power within you right now to make that shift. Yeah. I love that so much. And I love how you mentioned like your identity and how it's changed so much. And Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a question because I know so many women, even me personally have dealt with this, especially as I started having kids and my identity shifted so much. And when I started becoming, you know, an entrepreneur, my identity shifted and the people that I used to spend so much time with before, even family members, they didn't recognize this new person. And there were times where it was like you naturally wanted to pull back and go back to that old identity. What, tell us about that. Like, was there ever an experience that you had where you were like, okay, you know, I no longer identify as that person. So I have to eliminate some of these people in my life or maybe like turn the volume down a little bit when I'm around them. Was there any situations like that? Yeah, that's a a really great question. Um, I would say there was absolutely a moment in time. I feel like somebody asked me this question like last week. They're like, when did you like have that moment where you were like, there's no going back, like to the old way that I used to live. Right. Because I will tell you, like 
this is not a linear journey. Like this is not like you start here and you just go up and up and up and up until you're like this new person. It is back and forth and back and forth. And I look at, you know, like my first year, like in, you know, making this identity shift. And I look at my third year and like, it's so different. And there was so much growth every year. And I think that's a big part of it is I've, I'm so growth minded. Like I, I even now still believe there is so much growth for me. And like, I have fallen in love with challenging myself because I know that life is hard and there are hard things about making changes. And there are also hard things about staying where you are or be going back. And you know, there was so many moments where I'm, you know, like truck trudging, trudging up the mountain and thinking this is so hard. Like, I just want to go to McDonald's or like thinking this is so right. hard. I am, you know, not motivated to do this workout today. And I just, a huge part of it was the community, you know, and I know that you ha are f so familiar with that, having the community that you have and that you, you know, manage being in a community where other women are working towards goals alongside me was a huge part of my transformation, but just remembering how hard life felt when I was my old self, my old identity. Yeah. And, you know, for the listeners right now listening and you're like identity, like, what does that even mean? It's like the identity, identity just means like the way you see yourself. Like right. many of you listening, maybe like I identify as someone who's always late. Like I'm always late. Like I'm just, my kids are always the last ones at school. We are always tardy. And like you identify as that. Yeah. But you can change anything about your identity that you want to. You can become a person that's always on time. And there were so many parts about my identity that shifted. But a huge one was that I just had to realize that I was worth it. I was worth paying for the, you know, the membership. I was worth investing the time. I was worth you know, telling my husband, like, you're in charge of the kids, I'm going to do a workout like on a Saturday, yeah. I was worth the, you know, sitting down during nap time, instead of turning Netflix on and making a grocery list and planning my meals for the week so that I could meal prep and feel ahead of schedule. Because what I realized, and I know we're going to talk about this a little bit is that I so much used the weekends to escape the life that I had instead of using the weekends to create the life that I wanted. Oh, and yes. um, that huge shift, like realizing that what the things that we're looking for on the weekends, these feelings of joy and contentment and like relaxation and, you know, just happiness, truly, we are looking for them in the wrong places. We're looking for them in, you know, eating out Mexican every single Friday night and eating like, you know, three baskets of chips and queso and margaritas. And while that may make you feel happy in the moment, it's not really aligning with like where you want to go in life and what your goals are. And it's not about like the fact that you can never eat Mexican again or never have a margarita again mm -hmm. or never, you know, go out to eat again. But like, are your daily decisions, especially those choices you're making on the weekends, do they align with the person that you want to be and like the goals that you have? Because so often, and this is just the culture we live in, the society we live in, it's that instant gratification that we want so much. And we, true discipline is foregoing the instant gratification for the long-term vision that you really have for your life. And, you know, every single one of you listening, like has the power to create that life and to find joy and contentment and happiness in taking a hot bath and going to sleep at nine o'clock on a Friday right. night versus drinking a bottle of wine and staying up till midnight, you know, watching Netflix because you don't have to go to work the next day. And when right. you can like really make that shift and realize that the true joy you're looking for comes from making promises to yourself and following through with them. That is, that's the shift right there. That's the aha moment. Yeah. That's such a good point. So a lot of people, they want instant results and they're not willing to sustain or hold out for like the delayed gratification. But that's, that's the, that's the, I think the myth right there that we're telling ourselves, the lie that we're telling ourselves, we're telling ourselves that the gratification and that feeling of success and that goal that we so 
we so badly want to meet. We're telling ourselves that it's so far off, but what we yeah. really need to do is learn to enjoy the journey. As you yeah. mentioned, like it you can be, it better myself. Yeah. you can be satisfied doing those things that might sound like mundane tasks and things that you, it might actually start to sound, it might at the beginning sound like punishment. Like if somebody said, you have to start going to bed every night at nine o'clock when you used to stay up until 11 and watch Netflix every night. At first, yeah. you're going to be like, what the heck? I don't want to do this. But then yeah. over time, you're going to realize, oh, if I like can get my pajamas on, get ready for bed at 7.30, make myself a cup of tea, go sit and relax for an hour and a half, go to bed at nine, that I can wake up feeling like a million bucks, get a work on it. Over time, you're going to love the way you feel doing yeah. those things that you thought were punishment. And exactly. you're going to enjoy the journey. Yeah. And like, that's what, that's what people, that is the message right there because people think that happiness is at the end result, is at the weight loss. And it is not. And I will tell you time and time again, it's like, it's just the same thing when people say like more money, more problems. Like people think like, oh, once I make this much money, then I'll be happy. But like, as soon as you get there, there's going to be other problems that surface. It's the same thing with weight loss. It's like, you know, you kind of named one earlier. It's like you lose the weight and you're, you're this new person. And then all of a sudden, like your family doesn't want to be around you because you're, you're different. You know, it's like yeah. you, you get to the, the, the accomplishment and you, and I can tell you from personal experience, I've gotten to the accomplishment and I'm like, okay, well I lost the weight. Like, yeah, this what? is it. Like, I mean, yeah, right. it's fun that you can like fit in your clothes and feel confident getting dressed, but it is in the daily making promises and following through right. like literally yeah telling yourself that you are worth it every single day, you are worth giving up the instant gratification for the long-term vision. And that is where the happiness and the contentment come from. And I can tell you because from personal experience, I mean, I went through a period of time in the fall where I actually did like a bulk, like a calorie surplus in order to put muscle on my body. And in the process, I had to gain weight. Like that's part of it, you know, like muscle tissue weighs something. So when you're gaining muscle, like a lot of times that means you gain weight on a scale. And the amount of confidence and joy that I felt in my body, even though my jeans were tighter because yeah. I gained like four or five pounds over like a four month period, my jeans were tighter. My stomach wasn't the leanest it's ever been, but because I was like, pushing myself and I was tracking every single day and I did not miss a workout and I did not miss my 10,000 step goal. And I was literally making these promises and keeping them for myself. I didn't drink alcohol during that time. I, I was hardcore about my bedtime so that I could have the recovery I needed. And like doing all of that for myself made me feel so confident and so happy and so content in my life that I was like, yeah, like this is the feeling that I want. And it's not, I'm not achieving it right now because I'm at my skinniest. That's, that's literally not what's happening. I'm actually gaining weight. And, right. but that's what it's about. It's the journey and like learning to enjoy the journey and truly believing that like, there is not some magical feeling that you're going to feel when all of a sudden you're at your goal weight. It's mm -hmm. like falling in love with the process of taking care of yourself. And that is something that I can truly say over the last four and a half years, I truly have fallen in love with the process of taking care of myself. And, you know, I have clients that I work with where they are, you know, maybe in a stage where we're like, Hey, we need to like back off on like the fat loss. Like you've been dieting yeah. off and on yo-yoing for 10 years. Like maybe we just need to focus on a period of time where you are eating to your metabolic potential. And that's not what clients want. Like they want to lose weight, right? Especially if they have a weight loss goal, but through mm -hmm. that process, they are, they create so much awareness and I've had clients, I have a client right now that's been doing this for gosh, probably like eight weeks or so we've been tracking and like, she's been like doing her numbers every day, seven days a week, not losing weight. And she's like, gosh, like I'm, I'm not hungry. Like I always used to be, I'm not having all the cravings I used to be. I have so much more energy. And she's like, I never thought that I could feel this level of happiness and contentment without losing like the 30 pounds that I want to lose. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, because you're actually following through on your commitments to yourself. That is where the happiness is found. And it doesn't mean that you can never work towards like weight loss goal. Of course, like right. if that's a goal of yours, like that is valid, but 
there that's not where the happiness will be found. Yeah, I love that you and I think you actually posted something about this recently. Like you can't always be dieting. And that can't doesn't mean dieting. that that doesn't mean that you can't always be striving to like be fit and healthy. It's just yeah. like you can't be worrying about it all the time. Like you need yeah. to get to a, everybody, male, female, it doesn't matter. Everyone needs to get to a point where you know what it feels like to feel your best self, to show up as your best self, to fit in your jeans that you want to fit in, to sleep good, to just feel good and yeah. not be worrying about every single thing you're putting in your mouth, yeah. how much you're exercising every single week. You just need to start getting in that rhythm and just yeah. live your life like that. And of course, yeah, like you I said, mean, there's times we're, where you're like reaching for other goals and that's fine. Yes. But it's like, we're just taught like restriction is like what you're supposed to do. Yes. Like it is so built into like almost like our genetic makeup because of the way, right. you know, I mean, it's, it depends on obviously your age group, but like, I mean, I have clients in their sixties who are like, well, I grew up in the, I went to weight, I did weight watchers my whole life. And I did this yep. my whole life. And it's like, they're so focused on eating less. They don't even understand that. Like you actually should be eating enough to like, maintain your body weight. Like you aren't always right. supposed to eat, you know, 1400 calories, 1200 calories. Like most people shouldn't eat, be eating that little, um, especially if you're active. Right. Um, but people don't even understand that like there is this life where you can eat more, maintain your weight, sleep better. Like you said, feel energy during the day and not have this like fear of food that feels so like you're just so scared and petrified of anything you put in your mouth is going to make you gain weight because that's just right. not true. I mean, we need food, calories are energy. And that's such an important part of just our life. And it's, it's really sad. Like how many women are just so scared of food and scared to eat. And all they know is restriction and over-exercising. Yeah, definitely. Well, I want to transition into you have a weekend program that I've seen yeah. you advertise and it's a very, it's a very popular program. And I want you to talk about going all in on the weekends because I have talked yes. about this on the podcast before briefly, but I think people underestimate the power of going all in on the weekends because here's what we find. We have clients that'll come to the gym. They will stay consistent for a few weeks and then they'll say, Oh, well, my work schedule's crazy. Like, I think I'm just going to have to put my membership on hold. I'm going to come back in a few months when things die down or my kids have sports. I'm not able to make it to the gym in the afternoon. I can't come, you know, Monday through Friday, like I want to. And I'm like, well, Hey, what if you just came like one day during the week and you really went all in on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or just Saturday and Sunday. And if you can get a few days in during the week, great. But if you go all in on the weekend, when you know you don't have to work, your schedule's not as busy, you have more time for yourself. Imagine how you're going to show up on Monday at work yeah. if you do that all weekend versus the opposite. What most people do is they actually go into work on Monday more tired. They're not relaxed at all because they overdid it with the eating, with the drinking. They didn't sleep. And they Sunday just, scaries. They yeah. 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 They have the yeah. Sunday scaries. They, they have too many Sunday fun days. And yeah. I want you to talk about that. Yeah. So, um, I have, it's called the weekenders challenge. Um, and it's a three day challenge and I do it over a weekend every time so that it makes you, the point of it is to challenge you, um, because there is like no better way to meet yourself than to do something challenging, you know? And so it's, it's over a weekend. Um, I usually do it once a month. I actually, am, I don't know when this episode will air, but I'll have it this, this coming weekend. It's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I do live coaching on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning for about 30 to 40 minutes. And then I give each person homework that does the challenge. And um, there's kind of like a protocol they have to follow for the challenge. And it is mostly mindset work, which is a huge thing that I coach on. Um, in addition to doing the, being a faster way coach, I actually work more one-on-one -on -one with some clients, um, on mindset mentoring where I'm literally helping them shift their mindset on, you know, it can be about anything truly. Like we talk about marriage, we talk about parenting, we talk about nutrition, but, um, it's definitely something that I've found that I have a gift for is this mindset coaching. And so we talk a lot in the weekender challenge about mindset and your mindset on the weekends, because a huge statistic that people don't realize is that your weekend 
is 42% of your week because everybody's weekend starts on Friday. We all know this. Yep. If you work full time, <laughs> I remember whenever I worked, I still work full time, but I have my own business now. But I remember when I was in an office setting, we always went out to lunch on Friday to somewhere fun to kick off the weekend as an office. And that was when the bad eating started. It was Friday at lunch. So your weekend is 42% of your week. So that means that if you are, or I say for, maybe 43%, I don't know, 42, 43%. But if you are only following through with your goals, the other four days of the week, Monday through Thursday, that means you're only nailing your goals 57% of the time. And 43% of the time you're not. And so I'll have clients who are like, I'm so good Monday through Thursday. And then Friday comes and I just completely fall off. And so it's really diving into the mindset of like, why? Like time is a construct. Like, Humans literally made up time. We made up that like the weekends are different than the week. They, they yeah. don't actually have to be any different. Like a Saturday doesn't have to be any different than a Tuesday. We just right. make that up in our minds. And there's no reason that you shouldn't have to like do a workout on a Saturday or you shouldn't make breakfast for yourself on a Saturday, just like you do on a Wednesday, if you're following, you know, a program. Um, and of course, like my program that I coach does teach you like how to eat out and like how to eat when you're away from home and those kind of things, because of course that's going to be a factor in your life, but people go balls to the walls on the weekend. They're like, going all out. They're eating out. They're taking takeout for every meal. They're like, you know, at sporting events, eating, whatever. And then they, or they're like trying to follow their diet. So they like abstain from eating. And then they just like binge, you know, on Saturday night, they do pizza and all the things. And that just is getting, you nowhere fast. And so it's really, the weekenders challenge is really diving into like, why is that? And it really goes back to what we talked about. It's like the feeling that we are chasing on the weekends because our weeks feel so, so busy, so stressful, kids activities, work, um, you know, just all the things we have to do that when the weekend comes, we're just, we just want to take a load off. We just want to be like, ah, you just sit back. Let me relax. But you're looking for that instant gratification in like food or in like, you know, having a few drinks, um, which turn into too many drinks and it turns into too many drinks on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And, you know, that is going to lead to you not feeling great on Saturday and you're not going to get that workout in because you have a headache from the margaritas you had the night before. And mm -hmm. then you miss your workout or you stay up late watching Netflix on Saturday till midnight because you wanted to catch up on all your shows or real housewives or whatever that you missed during the week. And then all of a sudden you're supposed to do something on Sunday to move your body. But all you want to do is lay on the couch because you're tired and you're, you're also in a bad mood because you're not sleeping well on the, you know, you're sleeping less on the weekends and you're eating, like you said, on the weekends and you're drinking more on the weekends. And then Monday comes and you're like, okay, if I could just make it to Friday, yep, then I'll be do good. It all over again. And you do it all over again. And yeah. I want you to know that your life can feel so good seven days a week. If you just mm -hmm. stop trying to use the weekends to escape the life that you have and use it to create the life that you want. And this is a huge thing that I believe in. And that's where the weekenders challenge came from. I love that so much escaping the life and just living the life that you want. Something that I always think is funny. And I thought about this myself and I've kind mm -hmm. of, I don't drink alcohol very often. I mean, I will you know, on occasion. I, I yeah. used to, you know, and, and like before, I, I'm just going to put it out there like because of the kids is really the reason why, because we, I can't drink and not sleep. And you know, our kids don't care what you have going on. They're still going to get yeah. up at five 30. Yeah. So if I have had a few drinks and I have to get up at five 30 the next day, I'm not a pleasant person to be around. So it's like, yeah. it's not worth it for me right now. But yeah. what I think is funny is how let's just use alcohol. For example, you give up alcohol because you want to lose weight. You want to feel better. But then that's also the thing that you reward yourself for. So no. it's like you, make it you can have a whole conversation on rewarding yourself. <laughs> so we oftentimes we reward ourselves with the thing that we needed to take away in order to meet our goal. And then you just completely start over that cycle. And I was thinking to myself a few months ago, so my husband and I, we try to do a weekly date night. And usually that's when we would have like our cocktails. And so we would go out, you know, have two or three drinks. And then the next day, of course, not feeling the best, maybe I'll work out, but I'll probably give it 50%. And so I was calculating, I'm like, okay, 
if I drink once a week, only once a week like that, a few drinks, that's two days out of the week that I'm off track. And if I do that every single week, that's like 30% of my month. Like, yeah, no wonder, no wonder why I'm not reaching my goals. Yeah. And alcohol is actually something that I've really been diving into a lot of research recently. And so yeah. this actually might be interesting for you and the listeners. Alcohol stays in your system for 10 days after you drink, not yep. just the two days. So like you might feel like sluggish right. the next day, but like you really are feeling the effects of it for the, for 10 days. And the crazy thing, and this goes right off of what you said is so many moms will say the the reason they drink is because they're so stressed and overwhelmed. But yeah. What if the reason you're so stressed and overwhelmed is because you drink? The reason you drink. Oh. I literally had a client last week that sent me a, a, a Voxer. She's one of my mindset clients and she has been having a goal to drink, not to drink. And she is a judge. And so she has a very stressful job. And she was like, oh my gosh, on Thursdays, I usually have um, this, this day where I'm, I'm dealing with clients who are representing themselves. They don't have attorneys and it is the most stressful yeah. day of the week, every week. And usually I go home and like, I have vodka and I drink the night before and I drink that night because it's so stressful. And so last week she didn't drink the night before she didn't drink the, the day after. And she messaged me and she was like, Emily, oh my gosh, I got through the whole day. It felt so less stressful. I managed my emotions. I didn't feel like I needed to overeat when binge and eat, make a drink when I got home. And it, I know it's because I didn't drink the night before. And I was like, yeah, yeah how yes. crazy that your stress was literally being caused from drinking and yeah. just eliminating that like for a week made her whole work week better. And so many people drink because their work weeks are hard. Right. And it's Crazy. making it harder. It's yeah, making, making it harder. harder. It, yeah. It's a hard, it's a hard pill to swallow. Like I will, sure. I will say like, you know, if we're on vacation and like, we yeah. don't have any responsibilities and we're relaxing, like, you know, having a drink here and here and there, like it's fine. But yeah. I do feel people underestimate the power of not Oh, I mean, just reducing your alcohol yeah. intake when it comes to not only weight loss and your sleep, but your stress. Like as yeah. a mom, I know that yeah. alcohol makes me more anxious. And like, I yeah. cannot be putting anything in my body that's making me more anxious. Absolutely. And it's just so normalized. And, you know, this is definitely for me does not come from a judgmental place at all. Um, this is something very new to me. I'm similar to you. Like I used to drink four years ago, four or five years ago, whenever I started this health journey, I was drinking daily. I would have a glass of wine yeah. every night when my husband came home from work, or I would have a beer every night when my husband came home from work. And then when I realized what alcohol does and how it pretty much halts the fat loss process, I was like, well, right. I need to reduce this. So then it just went to the weekends. And, and for a year, I probably just drank on the weekends, Friday and Saturday. And then that kind of morphed into like maybe only one night on the weekends. And then it was only like maybe twice a month. And then it was like yeah. special occasions. And Recently, I've really um, become, I guess, the the word that the kids are using these days is sober curious. That's like the right. sober curious movement where it's like, yeah. just like get really curious about like how you feel when you drink and how you feel after you drink and how you feel in social situations when you choose not to drink and you're like the only one. And um, yeah. it's, it's really, it's really eye opening. I think so too. I'm actually, I would definitely say I'm in that phase right now. Like we're trying all of the mocktails and I keep getting, yeah. they're hey. targeting me, you know, the ads on all Instagram. You need, when you, when you're in a social setting, all you need is a fancy glass, truly. Like oh, yeah. I've gone to so yeah. many events, like friends' birthdays. And I mean, I'm we're from Louisiana. We do a lot of Mardi Gras stuff. I mean, I didn't drink. Yeah. I've gone on work trips where I didn't drink. And I mean, as long as I have a fun glass in right. my hand, with like a lime or something in it, it feels yeah. the same. And oh, you're yeah. so much more aware and you can just like enjoy yourself truly just as much. And if you can't, if you feel like you're, you have anxiety in these social situations when you're not drinking, that also kind of opens up a whole world of like, okay, well, like, why do I feel this way? Like, why do I feel the need to distract myself. Like, what is my life? Can I be happy with my life? And can I feel content in my life without distracting myself with food and alcohol? And that's a huge part of the weekenders challenge as well. That's such a good point. It, it, it does open your eyes to like 
to the actual, like what is go- going on and what's the root cause of it. Whereas yeah. when you're drinking alcohol, it masks everything. So you mm-hmm. don't really know. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. So I yeah. want to ask you one last question that I think our yeah. listeners will really be able to relate to. So, you know, you have four kids and you are a health coach, you're a mindset coach, but I know that you have had to have struggled with a little bit of like the mob guilt and feeling like the time that you've taken away from them might feel selfish in the beginning because yeah. you should be doing all the things to take care of them and be a wife. And how do you, how do you like squash that negative talk inside of your head when that mob guilt creeps in and you know, like taking care of myself is the right thing. Like I need to still show up for my workouts. I need to take care of me. Yeah. I think that it definitely was harder in the beginning. Um, you know, and especially like I would go to the gym and like use the, the childcare. Cause, um, I, whenever we moved here, like I had a baby and then I've had another baby since then. So I've always like utilized the childcare in order to work out. And I can remember feeling so guilty, like dropping her off. Like these other people are going to babysit her so I can work out. Um, yeah. but you know, it really was taking that first step. And once you take that first step, And you kind of get over the threshold of like where it feels hard and it feels you feel the resistance and you do the challenging thing and you see the reward and you see that, wait a second, I'm actually a better mom whenever I put myself first. And I feel extremely strongly about this. Um, You will be a better mom if you put yourself first. And like I put myself first in all the ways like my husband's out of town for the weekend. We are absolutely getting a babysitter for a few hours just so I can have time to myself. So I can go on a walk by myself. So I can bring a kid to a birthday party without loading all four kids in the car. And I don't feel guilty about that now. It's taken a lot of practice, but putting my mental health first, um, hiring help where I need it, outsourcing where I need it, um, relying on my spouse a lot. I mean, we are definitely 50, 50 parents. I actually laugh sometimes. I feel like we're more 60, 40, like he's 60 and I'm 40. <laughs> um, as far as like housework and cooking and cleaning and, and taking care of the kids and carpooling and all the things. Um, but what I can tell you is right now, it may feel impossible to put your fill first because you have so much responsibility. You have all these kids that you need to take to activities and you know, you're exhausted and you just want to sleep and you don't want to wake up early and all these things. But when you make that, take that step to put yourself first, you will find that all of a sudden, because you are taking time for yourself, the time spent with your kids is so much more present. The time yes. spent for, with your kids is so much more intentional. You know, I can put my phone down at five o'clock and leave it in the office and go upstairs and play on the pl- the playroom floor with my one-year-old for 30 minutes being so present and intentional because I've had that time to myself and I don't feel worn out and I don't feel like he's on my hip 24 um, seven because I really take that time for me. And that allows the time with my kids to be maybe, maybe a shorter amount of time, but Kids don't need you for four hours. They need you to be present for 30 minutes. They don't need yes. half of your attention span or 20% of your attention span for four hours a day. They need you to be really there for them for just a small period of time, really intentionally present. Yes, I appreciate you sharing that because I think so many moms, and I've definitely gotten stuck in this cycle where you almost feel like your life should always be chaotic. And like, that's just the way we're supposed to live. Oh, like, you, you know, you're like addicted. People are addicted to this. This yeah, is a thing. We're being addicted, addicted to stress. To the chaos. Yeah. Addicted to and stress. Like yeah, you you're addicted to stress. Stress if your life feels calm, it feels unsafe and, to our nervous systems. <laughs> right. And I think that all goes back to reminding yourself that you're worthy of feeling calm. You're worthy of feeling present and taken care of and yeah. like, Yes, motherhood is hard and we're going to look back one day and we're going to miss the struggle is real phase of life. We're going to miss that. Like it's, it's inevitable, but also like, I want to get to the other side and say, I enjoyed it. I was present. My kids saw a mom that was happy, that took care of herself. And then I want to pave the path for them so that they know that's normal. It's normal. to go to the gym. This, it's normal how you're to take- supposed to do that. Yes. And I, yes. I a hundred percent agree with you. Like 
the fact that my kids really have grown up with a mom who takes care of herself and especially my daughter, like this all started when my daughter was born. And the fact that she just knows that mommy works out, like that is what I do. And like, when they see videos of me, like on Instagram, like lifting weights at the gym, they're like, Oh, mommy's so strong. And I'm like, (laughs) yeah, I am. And like, you can be that way too. And like, it's this normalizing it is, is a huge, is so important. Oh, yes. I just thought of one more question. I know I said that was the last question, but one more. Okay. Is there anything that you would tell yourself? So you've been pregnant four times. You've had four postpartum journeys. Is there anything that you've learned over the years, like maybe with baby number four, that you would tell yourself from baby number one when it comes to like your health and fitness journey? Because there's a lot of women that, you know, they they'll get pregnant, they'll lose the weight, and then they'll feel good. And then they always have that fear of like, oh gosh, will I be able to get back in shape again if I get pregnant again? Like, it is kind of scary. And you know, your body changes every single time. So yeah. is there anything that you've learned? Yeah. Um, particularly with my fourth pregnancy, just having the knowledge that I have now, especially because I've coached so many postpartum and even pregnant clients. Yeah. I would say there's no rush to lose the weight. I personally did not even start my fat loss journey of losing the baby weight until I was six months postpartum on purpose because your body goes through so much when you're pregnant. And especially if you've had more than one pregnancy, um, you are so depleted. And if you're breastfeeding, that adds another level of depletion. That adds another level of demand on your body. Your body is has so much demand on it through pregnancy. And when you go through childbirth, you're so depleted and you're not sleeping well. So like, Right. No woman has any business trying to start her weight loss journey when she's like eight weeks postpartum. Like the doctor clears you. Like I started working out at like eight, six to eight weeks postpartum because I was cleared, but I was not actively trying to lose weight until six months postpartum when my milk supply was established. Once the baby was actually sleeping through the night consistently so that I was sleeping more consistently. That's when you should start the the process of starting to lose weight. And it was hard. It was hard to, I had to, I remember I had to buy like different jeans and different jean shorts. Cause I was like, if I'm not going to start the weight loss prog- process till six months postpartum, I need some clothes yeah. that are going to fit, you know, in the meantime. And, um, that was, that was tough, but I, had to remind myself, you know, that again, the happiness is not going to be at like my postpartum, you know, weight loss size. I can feel happy now and taking care of me does not equal me getting skinny. Mm. And that is is what so many people think. That's different. Those are two different things. Taking care of yourself and like getting as skinny as possible are not the same thing. Yes. That's such great advice. It's kind of like a tough pill to swallow. Like I'm going to be honest, like after I had both my kids being that I'm a gym owner and I'm like, you know, coaching until I'm 39 weeks pregnant. And then I want to get back in the gym as soon as the baby was born. Like I very much put that pressure on myself. Like I need to lose the weight. I got to lose it quick. I have to be the example. And that is why I struggled with breastfeeding and had, you know, that postpartum journey that was up and down in the beginning. So I think same advice uh, that you would give yourself. I would give myself too. like, just yeah. let, let it be like, wait yeah. until and at I, least I didn't months. get it right. till the fourth time. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it took well, there's, four tries, there's but to leave it if I do another one. Yeah. Take it from me. I mean, like you will have a, such a more enjoyable process postpartum. If you are truly taking care of yourself and eating enough, yeah. like the calorie demand on your body is very high in the postpartum stage, especially if you're trying to breastfeed. And so really right. giving your body what it needs, even if it means not losing the baby weight as fast, it's really important. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, Emily, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I know our listeners are going to get so much value from this episode. Where can they find you on social media and learn more about you? Yeah. So Emily eats and chats is my Instagram handle. That is probably the place that I'm most active. I'm on TikTok. I'm on YouTube, but Instagram is definitely where I am the most. You will find me on my stories daily. I post every single day in there and, um, send me a DM. I love, love, love getting in conversation and connecting with women, um, and hearing about like what your struggles are, what your barriers are and what your goals are and, and helping you, you reach those goals. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And thank you to our listeners for joining for another episode of the Beyond the Scale podcast. As always, make sure to check us out on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, and share this episode with all of your friends. Until next time, you guys, thanks so much. Mm -hmm.